Okay, what have we got today? Oh, a new video from Gary Does Solar. Brilliant. Let's have a look. In this video, we'll be looking at the export tariffs offered today by the UK's leading energy provider, Octopus Energy. And I'll give you my prediction on what might happen to them in the near future. Mm, yeah, definitely interesting. So here's my view then on what Octopus Energy can do with a carrot approach. Well, it's simple, really. Modify the algorithm that calculates the export rates for outgoing Agile so that it becomes a more favourable tariff to be on than the current outgoing Octopus. I guess there's some analysis to be done to figure out what the tipping point might be. It's a bit beyond my skills, but maybe Tim from Tim and Cat's Greenwalk might be interested to take a look. Excuse me, what? He's not only a spreadsheet king, but a data scientist in his day job. What do you say, Tim? Well, Mr. Does Soda, if that is indeed your real name, flattery will get you everywhere. Challenge accepted. So if you've not yet seen Gary's video, I thoroughly recommend watching that before you watch the rest of this one. I'll put a link above my head. But the basic premise of his video is that there are currently two outgoing rates for export that you can get with Octopus, the fixed 15 pence per kilowatt hour that is flat across the day, and the agile export uh, rate that you can get, which varies by half hour. Uh, now, if you go to the historical data, the um, Agile portal here, and take a look at the most recent year of uh, export data, so I've picked the West Midlands and the 1st of July through to the end of June um, this year, and you can see that the average of those uh, half hourly prices is about 9.5 pence uh, per kilowatt hour. Now, that's obviously a little bit lower than the 15 pence a kilowatt hour, and you could think naively that if you were to just increase this by about 50%, you'd make this a more attractive um, proposition than the fixed rate and everybody would be happy to switch over. However, uh, we can do a little bit better than that, I realise, because obviously you've got all of these half hourly um, prices. Now, if you could combine that with, let's say, some typical generation data, um, then what you could do is actually work out um, what a more appropriate uplift could be um, in order for, uh, let's say, a typical solar install in the UK to be happy to switch from the fixed rate to the Agile rates. So uh, what I did was I actually downloaded this um, uh, year's worth of data and in fact I um, chose the average, the hourly average here so you've actually got an option of daily, daily average, hourly average and half hourly actual. I picked the hourly average and the reason for that is that I wanted to combine it with some actual uh, generation data and for that what I did was I went over to the PVGIS uh, tool which um, you can use to uh, see what your expected generation would be for a given array and I just picked uh, a random location somewhere in the middle of the UK here and I, uh, I fixed the slope at 35 degrees and the azimuth at zero so that's a south facing roof um, and I chose uh, one kilowatt peak and the reason for that will become clear shortly. The typical system losses that uh, PVGIS um, suggest at 14% um, and I grabbed, well, basically two years worth of data, the start year 2022, end year 2023. The reason I've done that is because that's as far as you can go. Unfortunately, um, we, I couldn't get the data to match the, um, the Agile data, but um, I'm only looking for a sort of um, uh, approximate estimate here, so I d it doesn't need to be super, super accurate. Um, so what I then did was I, I downloaded the data by clicking this uh, CSV button here, and that gives you hourly data for um, the whole uh, section of time that you want to download. And then what I did was I combined all of that into a spreadsheet. So let's go over and have a look at the spreadsheet. And here is all of that data. You can see there's quite a bit of it, um, basically hourly data for a whole year. And I took those two sources of data and I've merged them together so that we've got the agile export rate and the solar generation for that um, uh, hypothetical array that I showed from PVJS um, lined up um, by hour. Now, there was a little bit of tinkering involved because the um, Agile export data was uh, already accounting for clock change. However, the uh, solar data did not. So I had to make sure that I shifted the relevant portions of the um, solar data so that it aligned properly with the, um, the correct uh, hour uh, based on the local time, so um, British summer time during the summer months and uh, Greenwich mean time during the winter months, and it's very important that you do that. It's uh, It probably wouldn't make a massive, massive difference, but uh, you know it's worth getting these things right if you're going to do it at all. Uh, and then I've um, what I've done is I've set up a little bit of controls here uh, so that you can change a few settings. And uh, 
what the reason I chose a one kilowatt peak array in that original PVGAS um, data download was so that I could scale it up and down. So what I've got here is I've got a, um, a field called kilowatt peak that I can change, and I've currently set that to four kilowatts. So this is what would probably be considered um, a sort of traditional array um, in the UK over the last few years. Certainly around the time of the feed-in tariff, this was quite a common size for an array. Um, and uh, so what I can do is I can just change this value up and down to see what effect that has on the outcome. Uh, and then I've got a couple of other fields here. For example, what's your typical um, base load consumption for your house? And I've chosen, well, about 200 watts for most of the day, except during the 4 to 7 p.m. peak period, where that goes up to about 0.6 um, uh, kilowatts, so 600 watts. Uh, that's probably not a million miles off a, a you know a typical home consumption. Um, you could make this a little bit more complicated, but it probably won't really change the results too much. And then I've allowed a field for how much you want to force export your battery, if you have one, back out to the grid. And I've just set this to two kilowatts at the moment. So that means if you're exporting for uh, three hours from four until seven at two kilowatts, that's about six kilowatt hours. That's probably not a million miles off of what most um, people with a modest system would be able to export. Um, and then I've also uh, set the inverter max limit at four kilowatts. So this is what I would consider a sort of, let's say a benchmark uh, set up um, a you know south facing traditional um, four kilowatt uh, install um, with a modest battery that you can force export for three hours. It multiplies up the solar generation from PVGIS by the scaling factor here to uh, turn it from one kilowatt to four kilowatt peak. And then um, I've got a little flag here to tell me when the peak periods are. So it, it's uh, flagged as one in the four till seven period. So um, four, five, and six p.m. It's uh, this little flag here is set to one, and that then sets the base load. So what your house is consuming at any given time. So 200 watts during the day, and then 600 watts during the peak, and then it calculates how much you would actually be exporting based on of those um, values. So obviously you consume what you're uh, generating at the time, um, um, and then any excess goes out to the grid, and that's what's um, resulting uh, in this column here. Then you just multiply the um, agile export rate by what you're exporting at any given hour, and uh, you get your earnings per hour for each of the hours in that year. And then what I can do is add all that up, and that's what I get in the these cells here. The total amount that we're exporting in this particular scenario is just over five megawatt, hour, megawatt hours, and we're earning about 568 pounds by doing that. And that gives us an average export rate of 11.16 pence Per kilowatt hour. Now you can see that's a little bit higher than the 9.46 pence per kilowatt hour um, of the uh, if you average just all of the um, half hourly uh, agile export rates over that last year. And that's because a lot of the export that you're doing is actually at the peak rate because you're doing this force exporting at uh, two kilowatts. And you can see that's what's shown in this chart down here. We've got the uh, this is basically averaging all of the export. Um, for across uh, each month. And you can see that obviously we're um, peaking during the day and then we're force exporting a bunch during that four till seven peak period. And the reason that that's um, bumped up the average rate is that if we scroll down a little bit, I've done the same thing with the actual agile export rate. And you can see if you average it across time and by month, you can see that it doesn't matter which month you're in, you always see this peak in the export rate between four and 7 p.m. And that's why if you can con concentrate your export during that period, then that will give you a better export rate than if you just exported, let's say, flat across the, the day, or if you just relied on your solar export, because when you're just exporting your excess solar, it's happening, tends to be happening at, at much lower um, agile export rates than if you tried to concentrate that export in that peak period. So here's where things start to get interesting. If you are able to squeeze more of your export into this peak period, you can actually do better than this 11.16 pence per kilowatt hour. So let's say, for example, we don't export at all. Let me set that to zero. And you can see that all of the export is happening during the day. And we immediately actually drop down to um, actually below the average by just taking the, the straight average. We're down to 7.92 pence per kilowatt hour because all of the um, exporting is happening, or most of the exporting is happening when the agile export rate is somewhat lower. 
But let's say, for example, we could export a little bit more. So let's bump it up to, well, let's say 3.6 kilowatts of uh, forced exports during that peak period. Now we've managed to bump our average export rate up to 12.69 pence per kilowatt hour because we, we're managing to export more during that peak period. Now, if we were able to do that, we would only require an uplift of 18% on the existing agile export rate in order for it to uh, your average to be brought in line with the 15 pence per kilowatt hour that you could get with the flat export rate. But let's put this back down to two, just for sake of argument. And you can see if we did that, we would need a 34.5% increase in the agile export rate for that to be worthwhile. Now, let's be a little bit controversial. And let's say we don't actually have any um, solar array at all. We're just, um, we've got a battery only install. So let's set that to zero. Now we're, all of our export is now happening during that, uh, that peak period and nothing is, ha is getting exported any other time. Now if we were to do that, we would actually be averaging 17.2 pence per kilowatt hour, which is already higher than the 15 pence per kilowatt hour flat rate. So you could argue based on this that if you really wanted to make the best use of the agile outgoing um, tariff, then you would uh, ditch your solar array and just do uh, a battery only install. Um, and that's because you're not doing any exporting during the peak of the day. Now I should probably mention at this point that I'm assuming that obviously you are charging your, if you have got a battery, you're charging it up overnight so that all of your excess solar goes out to the grid. Um, and uh, obviously if you had a battery only installed, you'd be doing that by default. So um, here's the interesting thing from doing this analysis. It turns out that if you had a bigger array, let's say, let's bump it up to six kilowatts and let's bump our inverter up as well to six kilowatts as well to make sure that we can export as much as we, as we like. The average rate that you can get by doing that drops because more of your export is happening during the day relative to how much you're being able to force export at that peak period. So uh, yeah, the irony is that the bigger your array is, the higher um, the uplift would need to be for the agile outgoing rate for it to be worthwhile you switching from the flat rate to agile outgoing. So uh, yeah, if you've got a relatively small array, say four kilowatts, and uh, you are happy to um, just export a, you know, a modest amount during that peak period, if the agile outgoing went up by 35%, then that would probably be worth, worth your while. If you had a very big array, um, let's bump it right up, let's say eight kilowatt, uh, eight kilowatt uh, inverter, eight kilowatt array, then yeah, you'd need a 50% increase in the um, outgoing agile rate in order for that to be worthwhile. And you can tinker around with these values um, however you choose and you can uh, see what effect it has. Um, so I'll make this uh, spreadsheet available. Um, uh, go uh, to the link and then click the file and then make a copy um, and uh, tinker to your heart's content. So there you go, Gary. I hope that was a satisfactory answer to your challenge. As you can see, it's quite complicated. It depends very much on the system that you've got installed. Big arrays actually require a bigger uplift in the Agile outgoing rate, which was uh, quite an interesting result from that analysis. But in summary, I would say a good rule of thumb would be roughly a 35% increase in the Agile outgoing rate would be in the right sort of ballpark. Anything more than that would probably be pretty good. So that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like this sort of analysis, then hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already for more of this sort of nonsense. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.